Hello, and welcome back to the Cavallo Tights Sew Along. Today is day four, and I'm Sarah. I blog at sewingwithsarah.com and on YouTube, Sewing with Sarah. And I'm excited to be continuing our adventure sewing the Cavallo Tights with you. Today, we're going to be talking about sewing our crotch seam and our waistbands onto our Cavallo Tights. So by the end of the day, you should have a pair of tights that's almost entirely constructed except for the hem. Um, now, just as a review, on our first day, we talked about pattern options, we talked about grading, we talked about fit, um, we talked about supplies, and on our second day, we went ahead and pre-assembled the pockets. On our third day, which was yesterday, we attached the pocket insert piece to the leggings and sewed the leggings together, um, each leg together. So you should, at the beginning of today, have two separate leg pieces. So both of your pieces should look like this. Be one leg piece like for the left and one for the right. And today I'm gonna to show you how to sew them together at the crotch and then how to attach your waistband. Now, um, just as a reminder, I'm also releasing some bonus tips and tricks each day, many of them having to do with cover stitching. So if that's something that um, you're interested in learning, you can find those tips and tricks um, on my YouTube channel as well as in my blog post. So if you're ready, grab both of those leg pieces and let's go get started. Okay, so I brought you down to my table and now you're going to wanna lay each leg with one insides out and one right sides out, okay? You wanna make sure at this point that you've done any of your optional top stitching. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this yesterday, but when I do my top stitching along either side of the pocket, I always press my seam allowances away from the pocket so that I'm not eliminating any of the space in the pocket. That's especially important when you have a smaller pocket, but I do it on these as well. So I'm going to now take the piece that is right sides out. I'm gonna put it inside the piece that's wrong sides out so that those right sides are together. So I'm just gonna snug that down in here. And you're going to be sewing the crotch seam. So you're going to be matching up. This is the back curve. And this is where I like to use a pin instead of a clip. Because when I pin at 3 eighths of an inch, I want to check and open it up and make sure that everything's going to be lined up. And mine actually wasn't lined up quite right. I'm just going to shift it a little bit. And now you can see that those pieces are lined up. You want to make sure that those seams are lined up well. Now this is something where I'm going to recommend that you go over to your sewing machine and baste. Use a long stitch without back stitching. Just baste that spot at 3 eighths of an inch so that you don't have to worry about it if you're put, when you're um, running it through. Whether you're running it through your sewing machine or your serger. Um, especially if the serger is guilty of sometimes using that differential feed to get things a little bit off. And you really want those two to line up. So I'm putting flips all the way around my crotch curve, making sure that you've got them right sides together. Okay. Now, if you have made a muslin and you've decided to scoop anything out a bit here, you can do that at this point. Um, but I would caution you against making judgments on these before you put on the waistband. Having that waistband on really makes a world of difference when it comes to how leggings fit. So sometimes people will try on the leggings without the waistband and they'll say, oh, the crotch doesn't fit right because they don't have the waistband to hold it up. So I would be careful about that. But now I've got this all penned, I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to baste this. You could also use a piece of wash away wonder tape or something just so that those don't get off because that's super important to me that my seams match up. I'm just kind of OCD about those things. And then I'm going to sew all the way around this curve, okay? Um, now this is somewhere where after I sew or serge, I do like to go back and do a reverse cover stitch. Um, if you aren't going to be doing that, um, I would highly recommend going through, if you have a serger, serging it, and then going through with a lightning bolt stitch and just reinforcing that crotch seam. 
I have never had anything terrible happen with a pair of knee made leggings, but I do not want to see the day where I'm, you know, doing a squat or something and my stitching comes undone. So I always like to go over and reinforce that if you're not doing a reverse cover stitch, which essentially serves to reinforce that area. So I'm going to sew that based, sew, and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now that you have the crotch seam of your pants stitched and top stitched, if you've chosen to do that, now we're going to work on the waistband. Um, now, for your waistband pieces, you may have the asymmetrical waistband where you have a smaller center front piece, or you may have a symmetrical waistband like I do. Um, you're gonna wanna take those pieces and you should have an inner, a set of inner waistbands and a set of outer waistbands. You're gonna wanna take those pieces and sew them together at the side seams at 3 eighths of an inch. Now, if you are making adjustments to your waist, um, your pattern pieces may be a little bit different or you could even make some adjustments at this point. Um, if your waist is in a smaller size than your hips, then you could just take a deeper seam along the top of the waistband. You would wanna do the same thing for your lining and your main fabric. Um, if the opposite is true, you could take a smaller seam allowance at the top and a larger seam allowance at the bottom if your waist is in a larger size than your hips. Green style tends to draft for a curvier frame. So if your frame is um, straighter than that, then you would wanna make those adjustments and your, your waistband may end up looking a little bit more like a rectangle. So it's just a matter of kind of getting to know your body. Um, but go ahead and sew the side seams or the, the front seam, depending on which type of waistband you have, um, on your waistband pieces, your lining and your main. And we're going to then place them right sides together. This is where you're going to want to have your clear elastic available. Um, I would not recommend skipping elastic. The only situation in which that works is if you have a power mesh lining that would be a third layer in here. Um, but the elastic is really critical and clear elastic, it can be a quarter inch, it can be three eighths of an inch, but it really helps your leggings stay in place as you move. Um, I always get questions about, okay, can I use you know a regular elastic? You can, and I think in general it's better than nothing, um, but it is just thicker, and so you're going to feel that seam more. So you have two choices. After you've sewn your waistband seams, each individually, you have two choices for attaching your inner and outer waistbands. Um, you're gonna to wanna to place them right sides together, but so go ahead and do that. So I have my lining here, and I'm gonna place it inside my main fabric, which is right or, uh, wrong sides out at this point. And to reduce bulk, I like to make sure that if my main fabric seam is pressed to the right, that my lining seam is pressed to the left. That just makes it easier to get over those bumps with your cover stitch or um, you know whatever you're using. So if you are adding top stitching to your main waistband pieces, I would not add it to my lining, but I did add it to my main waistband pieces. You wanna already have that done. Just put some clips in there. And I have a separate video for how to attach the clear elastic with your serger as you sew. Um, but you can attach it, if you're using a serger, you can attach it separately. If you're doing that, I would serge around the top and then go back with your sewing machine in a zigzag stitch and add the clear elastic. Um, if you're adding the clear elastic with your serger, make sure your differential feed is set to one. You don't want it gathering this and making the waistband tighter. So I've got my waistbands clipped together. Um, your clear elastic, one more thing to note is that it's going to go on the wrong side of your main fabric, not the wrong side of your lining. So you want it on the wrong side of your main fabric. So you're gonna sew around there. If you want a slightly taller waistband, you could sew this at quarter inch instead of three eighths of an inch, but the seam allowance is three eighths of an inch. So go ahead and sew that. You should notice that your lining is a little bit shorter than your main fabric. And this is a really cool feature in green style patterns that helps the waistband roll toward the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I do not add any top stitching along the top of my waistband. Um, I just don't find it necessary. So I'm gonna sew that and then we'll be ready to attach it to the pants. Okay. So I've attached uh, my two waistband pieces together and I've attached the clear elastic at the same time. Like I said, I have a separate video showing you how to do that up close if you want help with that technique on your serger. Um, but if you're using your sewing machine, you know, you should just be sewing and then re-sewing a zigzag. Um, now you're ready to flip your pieces. 
Write those out. And you're going to take your clips or your pins and you're going to be attaching them together. So you should see that seam. Let's see if you can, I can show you. You should see that seam kind of start to roll toward the inside. I'm going to continue clipping. Make sure your seam allowances end up pressed the same way at the top and the bottom. And then I would recommend quartering this just to make it easier to attach. So you're going to match up those two, either the center front seams or, or the, not the center front, but the seams in the, in the middle. If you're doing the asymmetrical waistband or seams on the sides that you can see where the quarter points are. So now you're ready to slip your waistband pieces together. Now you wanna make sure that you're doing right sides together. So you want to make sure that the right side of your waistband fabric is connecting to the right side of the pants. I've done that incorrectly before and it's very frustrating. Um, if you are doing the symmetrical waistband, this is a place where you'll want to baste again, just like you did on the back. Use that long stitch on the sewing machine to make sure that these lined up. You're gonna wanna baste your waistband and your pants pieces together to make sure that those look like, the, especially if you have top stitching, but just that the seam ends up just kind of lining up correctly. It's much easier to take out a little bit of basting than it is to take out, you know, a whole line of stitching. So um, strongly recommend doing that, especially if you're using that um, asymmetrical waistband. It's not a big a deal with the asymmetrical waist, or the, <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't say this correctly. It's not as big of a deal with the symmetrical waistband because your side seams are lining up to the marks you made on the side of the pants. So that's what you're going to want to clip all the way around the top and then you'll sew um you know with your 3 8 inch seam allowance you'll sew around the waistbands together and then you'll be ready to flip it up and your waistband will be attached now this is an area where i do top stitch so i will top stitch i will press the uh, waistband um i usually press it up and the seam and I will top stitch along the top of that um, just to reduce chafing for strength because I like the way it works. Um, and then once you do that, you'll be ready to go. You'll be all done except for the hem on your pants, which we'll finish tomorrow. Or if you're just excited, you can speed ahead. Um, now, after you've done that, it would be a great time to try on the pants to assess fit. Um, you know, keep in mind if this is the first pair, they're essentially, you know, kind of a trial pair. And so you may want to make changes in the future um, to adjust for your personal shape, but hopefully you've got something that you're really going to enjoy wearing. So I'm gonna go attach that waistband and I will come back and show you what that looks like and then we'll be all done for today. Okay, um, so I've sewn my waistband to my pants right sides together. Um, I tend, I noticed as I was doing that, that I tend to do that um, with the waistband on top. Some patterns instruct you to do it with the pants on top. It doesn't really matter as long as you're really making sure that all three layers line up there. Um, and after you sew, you want to go around and check and make sure that you don't have any spots where one of your layers didn't get caught in that seam. Um, now, I said that I... Uh, press the waistband up. That's incorrect. I'm sorry. I press the waistband down and then I stitch on the body of the pants for my top stitching. Again, totally optional. Um, you, if you're doing this with a sewing machine, I would leave that seam alone. Um, but if you have a cover stitch and you want to do either, you know, a two or three needle cover stitch or, you know, the reverse cover stitch along that seam, you can certainly do that um, by stitching from the inside of the pants and pressing your waistband seam down. Um, now there's a lot of bulk um, when you're going over, you know, parts where there's the, the pocket or the side seams, the pocket seams of the pants um, and that center back part. Um, and so if you haven't already checked out my tips video on how to deal with your cover stitch machine in bulk, now would be a great time to do it. Um, so if you have the asymmetrical waistband, you'll have your seams lining up here. If you have the symmetrical waistband, they'll be on the side. And um, now you're all done with your pants with the exception of the hem. 
which we will complete tomorrow. So this is a great time to try them on to see how they fit. Um, and then, you know, make any notes. Um, I'd like to put my patterns in um, eight and a half by 11 envelopes and I will make notes on the outside of the envelope as to changes that I want to make next time, what size I made, um, what sizes are in the envelope, etc. I have a whole blog post on how, my so, how I uh, store my patterns, so I'll be happy to link that um, as well. But other than that, we're pretty much done for today. Um, the bonus video that I'll be showing you today is how to deal with skip stitches on your cover stitch machine. So if you're interested in that, um, hang around and I'll post that separately, but otherwise you're done and you're almost complete with your leggings. So um, give yourself and someone else a virtual high five and we'll finish these babies up tomorrow.